So today we're going to talk on fixed automatic appliances. What exactly the fixed automatic appliances means? Nothing but they are a fixed one. Most probably you people know about the renewable appliances, which can be removed easily by the patient. But the fixed appliances are quickly fixing them now, and they are fixed till the end of the treatment. So what exactly it differs from removal, like if you are talking about removal, what they can cause is a simple tipping moment. There is no control on the root movement or on a tipping tool. You need more of patient cooperation and you have to maintain the hygiene. Then if you compare these removal appliances with the fixed appliances, then so you need more of bodily translation movements, you can control the root movement, you can control all planes and three planes, vertical plane, horizontal plane, in all the three planes you can control the root movement. It is less dependent upon the patient because it is a fixed appliances and it is still, it needs less hygienic things like as compared to the remote appliances. Moving on to the history, if you see the history, these are the fixed appliances are uh, developed in the late 80s by the Edward Anker. He first developed something called as ERG. Then he found some problem with the ERG and he moved to the pin and tube appliances. Later it is again modified as a ribbon or age-wise appliances. So most of the time now we call it as age-wise appliances, which is a fixed appliance therapy, which is used in automatic steering. Really looking practice as a fixed appliance therapy. What this Things is going to provide you like it is a modification of age-wise appliances in the simplest way as initially they used to have BEGS appliances. BEGS is something which is a single point contact. BEGS has a lot of single point contact. That is the first appliance which is developed in the Australia and then it is later transferred in the India. But initially most of the people used to practice the BEGS appliance. Then they found so many drawbacks with the BEGS appliance therapy. And then this age wise, which is introduced by a angle, is then converted into a fixed appliance that is recorded as a straight wire appliance. So, these diagrams they are showing the early fixed therapies. They used to band the teeth, all the teeth they used to band, and this is something called as a ribbon arch appliance. So, they used to band each and every tooth with a band retainer. And then they used to weld a bracket over it and with the ligature or elastic ties they used to pull it. So that was a thing. See, so how it is developed? So initially it is called as a ribbon arch or a pin and tube appliance, but there are certain drawbacks with the appliance. So putting up a band on each and every tooth was a difficult task for orthodontists. So the modification which came into the action is like a simple bracket, which is called as a standard age wise appliance. In the early, this is developing early 90s. The first one was in early 80s, then they have modified it to 90s with a simple bracket. Now, this is a bracket, it has got a slot, it's got a wings to tie, and in this slot, the arch wire goes. And if you see this side, there are some notches in the base of the bracket. So that notches will go help to retain the bracket on the tube surface. If you see the development of this fixed appliances, this is called as a pre-adjusted age-wise appliance. And what do you mean by pre-adjusted age-wise appliance? Pre-adjusted age-wise appliance means everything is incorporated into the bracket, base, bracket, slot. Now what exactly is incorporated in the bracket, base and slot? Slot. Now we will talk about the slot. What the slot has? It has a, a slot where it holds the wire. It has got a two wings. So because of two wings, you got a perfect control over the tooth movement. If it is a one point contact, means if you see the base bracket, it has got a single contact, a straight, straight slot. So it has got a single contact. Now if you see the pre state, it has got two wings, means there are two contact points where the wire touches at a two point to the slot. So there is more of proper control over the treatment. And it was developed in 1970s. So this refined manufacturing process 
this has got certain adjustments for a particular dip. Means every dip has a different tip and torque value which is incorporated in the bracket. Now, what is tip and torque? Exactly, tip and torque means can means you want a particular angulation of a tube. So, central has got a different angulation, lateral has got a different angulation, canon has got a different. Likewise, the motor it has a different angulations. What is torque? Uh, means it's a root position inside the bone. So, every tooth has got a different root position. All the teeth are not in the same position. They are in different root positions. So, that is incorporated in this pre adjusted age wise. So, this science is much developed. So, uh, with this, what happened because of this incorporating tip and torque, the orthodontists have a less difficulty to correct all the morphology because everything is incorporated. So, efficiency of this bracket is or the appliances as compared to the previous one is much more better and the results are quite promising means they have the best results in this now see this diagram this is showing a appliance this is banded what we call it as a full arch banded appliance every tooth is banded and on that band the bracket is welded or it is soldered and then the wire is passed so it's very difficult and it is problematic for a patient to maintain even because it infringes, it creates a lot of insulations. So these two other than two classes which can show you. That has been discarded later on and then we come into the action which is called as a pre-adjusted influence appliance, which has got a bracket base, it has got a base on the base, so you can fix that base onto the tooth surface so it holds it properly. Now, if you see the diagram here, it is showing it's a bonded member. Now, we are using a material that is Gizdma or what we call it as a composite, which is used to bond this bracket to the enamel surface. So, what you are supposed to do here is like you leave the surface, we have to each the surface with the 35% or 37% phosphoric acid for 30 seconds, then wipe it out, clean it, dry it so that you get a frost white appearance properly or white patchy appearance. And then you have to apply a bonding agent. This bonding agent is helps to, to make uh, go inside this in our cracks or in our velocities and it helps you to hold that adhesive to the bracket base. So it's called as a mechanical interlock. This is going to provide this bonding. This bonding helps to stabilize the bracket of the tube surface. See, this is a bracket base. You can see the mesh. This is a beautiful mesh. So, this mesh has got a gaps in between. So, when you are putting your adhesive over here, it goes inside. It holds. This is called a lecture. I this is called as a mechanical interlock. So mechanical I can run it. Me mechanical interlocking is something that there is no chemical bond. Mechanical means there are some patches, there are undercuts where your composite flows and it holds it properly. So that is something or as a mechanical interlocking. So now the brackets are coming with the beautiful meshes. So this mesh goes. So everything depends upon your mesh. If your mesh is good, you get a perfect bonding. Now this is called as something, these photographs are like pre-adjusted age-wise appliance. This is called as a pre-adjusted age-wise appliance where the brackets are bonded on the full surface with the bonding and adhesive and then wire passes between the slot. These are, there are two wings, see the first wing here and the second wing here. So this is called as a two-point contact. This is a two-point contact. The two-point contacts are there when you can control a proper tooth movement. Now let's talk about the bonding, we are right now on the bonding. So this is normal bonding, what we do in the routine procedure. Something is called as a indirect bonding. What is indirect bonding? Now routine bonding is like you are directly bonding the brackets on the tooth surface inside the patient's mouth. The patient is sitting next to you and you are bonding directly to the tooth surface. That is called as a direct bonding. Something is called as indirect bonding. Now, what is indirect bonding? Indirect bonding is you have to take the impression of a patient's maxillary arch or a mandibular arch. Convert it into uh, your study cast, and that cast is sent to the labs. So they will prepare some thermoplastic sheets or something called as a trays for you. But before sending these to the labs, you have to bond the brackets on the cast. First, you have to bond the brackets on the cast, 
that is directly you can see the truth surface you can measure it where you want to bond it bond it on the truth surface and then after bonding that truth surface uh, packets on the truth surface on a cast you have to send the cast to the lab so the lab people will prepare some kind of this aligners or a thermoplastic sheets with your brackets inside see the brackets are there inside now once you receive this from the lab what you have to do is the routine process you have to teach the surface clean the surface use the surface apply a bonding dry it and then apply a bonding on the good surface and directly you have to place adhesive on this bracket base and then put this tray inside the patient's mouth and then cure it with the gun now, what is the added advantage of this indirect bonding indirect bonding has simplified things like you can place the bracket exactly on the spatial axis of a particular tooth or what is called center of a tooth now when you are putting this bracket directly on the patient mouth right side if you are a right handed right side you can bond it very perfectly you can see a directly tooth surface and you can bond it but if you want to bond it on the left side you have to see it into the indirect vision so even your bonding on the left side you have to see it in the indirect vision means you have to use a mirror mouth mirror now what happens if your angle is not perfect or not correct then you cannot bond it on exact on the axial point so there may be your back may go or distally it may go mesially it may go incisally or gingerly so that creates a problem so to prevent that thing this indirect bonding is used now let's talk about the next thing is pain fix appliances is a lingual appliances lingual or appliances now initially we talked about the buckle appliances the appliance which is fixed on the buccal surface are known as buccal appliances the one which are on the lingual surface they are known as lingual appliances again the thing is that the brackets here are the brackets which are placed on the lingual surface of the tooth initially they are customized preform anything so now what happened most of the people they are using a customized lingual brackets what do you mean by customized customized means you have to decide the prescription prescription means you have to decide the tip and torque of individual tooth write it down on a paper and then send everything your study cast everything to the lab with your prescription so the lab will prepare particular brackets with particular design for you and with the indirect bonding they will send it to you once you have a, this kind of a setup directly you have to place it in the patient's mouth with the itching, bonding, and place the adhesive and place it and cure it. So that is more hassle free because putting the bracket buckle is more easier if you compare this lingual. If you are going to put lingually with the direct vision or with the indirect vision, it's impossible. Impossible because these surfaces are very, very difficult to see. So you don't get proper access to the surface to put the bracket. So indirect bonding is used for the lingual. Orthodontics. Now, if you see the difference is age wise slot. Same age wise slot is used here. You should do indirect bonding for the lingual or lingual brackets. And what happens in there is a decreased inter bracket span, means what the distance between two brackets on the lingual surfaces is reduced as compared to the buccal surfaces. So this is the common thing. If you are going to put the brackets buccally, the inter bracket distance is always more. Key. How you decide? See the circle. This line is passing from buccally. It's a larger circle, and this is a smaller circle, which is inside. So the distance between two bracket is less in the lingual, and the, the same thing is more with the buccal. This is a lingual appliance. See the inter bracket distance is very less. So depending upon that, the bracket size is also less as compared to the buccal appliance. And this is this wire, which is here placed with this appliance is known as a mushroom arch. This is what a mushroom shape. There are different shapes in orthodontics. We have a oval shape, round shape, and elliptical shape of these wires. Now, when you are using a lingual appliance, it should have a mushroom shape arch wire. This is known as a mushroom shape arch wire. The next one is like you have two things in your mind when you're using a fixed appliance. First is you should have a metal brackets either you will prefer your patient will prefer metal brackets or he will prefer something called a ceramic 
appliances. Ceramic appliances are known as aesthetic appliances. Aesthetic means what? See the smiling face. If you don't, you can notice the brackets are placed here, but they are pink colored. So, what happens when you put this ceramic bracket on the tooth surface? Your tooth color automatically reflects to these brackets and it appears as if nothing is there. So, that is something called as a uh, ceramic brackets or the aesthetic bracket. So most of the adult they prefer this kind of a treatment because of social stigma. They don't want to expose themselves to the society that they are undergoing treatment because of the age or something like that. So these are known as aesthetic brackets or the ceramic brackets. The next bracket system which is used commonly is known as self-ligating appliance. So what is self-ligating? See, let's go back to the ceramic or any pre-existing appliance. What we do is this is a bracket slot. It has got two wings. We place a wire and we use a ligature, ligature ties or elastomeric rings to hold the wire into the bracket slot. Right. So these ligatures or elastomeric rings it holds the wire inside the bracket slot and it delivers a pressure. What happens with this self ligating? Now in this self ligating, this is a clip. It has got a clip inside. The bracket is built or it is prepared in such a way that it has got a metal clip. What you have to do is push the wire inside the slot, lock it. You have to move this lock pins either up or it moves in a wrong direction. See, here the second figure is showing the wire is passed inside the slot and this clip, this is a locking clip. It is moved up. So it holds the wire into the slot. So these are known as self lighting brackets. There are something Different brands are there, speed brackets, so many brands are there available with this self-ligating appliances. So what is the advantage of this self-ligating package? See, you are putting an elastomeric ring here. This ring will work for 21 days and later on it gets degraded. Once it gets degraded, then it won't work. It won't exert any kind of a pressure on this. So what this causes, this is a metal slot, this is a metal pin, this is a ceramic bracket or it comes in a metal bracket. So once you move this clip up, it holds the wire till next appointment or even if patient doesn't turn to you for at least a two months, it will still exert a pressure. It works, your working is going on. You don't have a frequent visits. So that is a better and best advantage with the self ligating. Basically, what happens because of this metal clip, it exerts the pressure, the wire is exerting the pressure on the foot surface, and you get a proper quick movement. So the as if you compare the results with the pre-tested edge-wise appliance with the self ligating or any other appliance, self ligating reduces the treatment time. Most importantly, your treatment time is reduced with the self ligating. Even even there is a less pain. And these are more comfortable brackets as compared to the other brackets. So what are the components? Let's talk about uh, PSC. We are talking about the different brackets. Systems. Now let's talk about the components. Component means what? What you need for the fixed appliance? You need bands, first of all, bands on the molar. Second is nowadays the bands are uh, most of the people they are not using the bands, so they are using molar tubes, which are bondable molar tubes. You are directly bonding the molar tubes on the molar rather than putting the bands. Third thing comes is a bracket. From second premolar to second premolar, we are putting brackets. The brackets may be metal, maybe ceramic. Then the next thing comes your arch wire. Most importantly, your arch wire. Once you have placed the brackets, you need to put the arch wire because your arch wire is going to create all the treatment. Next comes your auxiliaries. What are the auxiliaries? Auxiliaries means once you place the arch wire, your arch wire should properly be seated into the slot and this should be folded properly. So what you are going to use it, that is elastomeric products or elastomeric rings to you hold the wire inside the bracket slot. Additionally, you need more things like coil springs. Coil springs are springs which are used to open the space to disguise any tool. That is the coil springs. They are the springs. Lingual arches. Lingual arches is to hold the molar in a proper position. You don't want anchor loss. 
you have to hold the motor in a proper place when you have to put the lever latch or the transparent latch and if at all it is a case a difficult case your magnesia or mandible is problematic or retrognathic you have to add something called as external appliances maybe it could be a head gear or something like that and what are the posterior attachments posterior attachments means what you need to put in the posterior segment that is your molar tubes mainly we are using the first molar as an anchor tube so you got to put molar tubes on the molars now you have to place a band on the molar and then you have to weld this molar tube to the band so that your arch wire passes to the last molar so this is known as a molar tube it comes in two things like a single molar tube or a double or a triple what is the difference Single molar tube has got a main slot, only one slot. Double molar tube has got two slots. This is double. This is the main basic arch wire, and this is additional slot. And third is a triple. It has got three slots. Now, why you need three slots? First, your basic arch wire goes here. Second slot, you need something additional arch wire can place it here. And the third is a head gear slot. Now, if a case with a vertical maxillary axis, the patient has got See there, maxillary prognathism is a going patient. Then you need to put a head gear gear in this slot. So you may have a single slot, two slot, or a triple tubes. What are the anterior attachments? Anterior attachments comes in like a bracket which are putting in the anterior segment from canine to canine or from premolar to premolar. That is known as the brackets. Now see in this picture you can see one wing and this is second wing and this is your slot. So this is another bracket. What are the arch wires? Next is arch wires. Now once you have placed brackets, you need to put an arch wire here in the slot. So either it may be a maxillary or a mandibular arch wire. Now, as I told you before, arch forms are different arch forms: parabolic, oval, elliptical. So it depends upon person to person. We cannot use the same arch wire for each and every one because every one has got a different body structure. Only base of the maxillary mandible. So, depending upon that, you have to choose the arch wire. It may be a oval, round, parabolic, elliptical, anything. Again, what is the size and cross section? So, immediately there are three, four sizes are available in the market. Basically, from day one, you cannot put a heavy wire. From day one, you have to go with the less cross section wire to higher cross section wire. That is a Basic concept. So, what uh, the size comes like? It comes in 0 0.012, 12, 0 0.012, 0 0.014, 0 0.016, 0 0.018. These are the different cross sections which are available with the nickel titanium wire. So, initially, you have to use a nickel titanium wire. This is a super elastic wire which delivers a lighter and constant force and it moves your tooth very slowly and it corrects. So, first stage of every treatment is alignment, and this alignment is always done with the nickel titanium arch wires. Then you can use a titanium molybdenum alloy, and then thirdly, you can go for a stainless steel. So it depends like which thing you want to use it. Okay, so initially you have to start with the nickel titanium arch wire, correct? So you have to use a 012. If it is a severely crowded case, use 012. Mild crowding is there, 016 or 014. And there is less crowding is there, then you can straight away go for 018. So, depending upon that, you have to use a nickel titanium wire. And then you can go for a second stage is stainless steel wire. Whenever you are treating any case, just check whether it is a class 1 case, class 2, or a class 3. Normally, what happens, you have to use some elastics. So elastics are the latex elastics. Latex elastics are what? Are used for basically if it is a class 2 case where your mandible is retrognathic, or it is a class 3 case where your mandible is prognathic, or anterior open vitis cases. There now, what these elastics do? These elastics see this is a class 2 case where maxilla is prognathic and mandible is retrognathic. So, what do you want in this case? You want to retract the maxilla behind and you want to pull the mandible ahead. So, you will do something called as a class 2 elastics which will run from lower mandibular molar to upper canine, maxillary canine. This is known as a class 2 elastics or it is known as a Baker's anchorage. Same like in a class 3, you have to reverse it. Rather using 
mandibular you will use a maxillary molar and mandibular canine so this way you have to apply elastic so what it causes it moves the maxilla ahead and it moves the mandible behind that is the concept in the same thing if you see the open bite case this is a vertical deformity where you want to close the maxilla and mandibular gap so you have to pull a vertical elastic so that it will pull both these towards each other and it will close it so these elastics will comes in a different sizes again you cannot use the same elastic for everyone so it comes in a different sizes to class one depending upon the force you want it comes if you want a very light force it is, then it is available in 5 by 16 you want a heavy force they are color coded all the elastics are color coded so depending upon that you have to use the elastics see again the elastics are of different as i told you the like midline elastics so midline means if your midline is not matching your facial midline should match the midline so to maintain that you have to use cross elastic cross elastic means from lower canine right side to the left maxillary upward this way you can use a cross elastic so they are the known as midline elastics again that is the purpose of this elastic is to make proper correction in the midline now let's talk about something called as external process now just before we had a discussion about like the triple tubes the triple molar tubes where the auxiliary slot is there so this is for headgear this headgear has got inner bow and outer bow outer bow is near your cheek inner bow it goes exactly on to the molar tube if you see this figure your outer bow exactly goes here in this slot this is a molar tube triple tube will be used in this triple tube this molar molar slot your, your inner bow goes so it holds there and this is a strap which is used externally elastic is there which is placed on the occipital region so it delivers so it delivers a force which will retract your maxilla so depending upon that uh, case to case you have to use this one whether it is a class one vertical maxillary axis case or a class two case or a class three case so normally this kind of forces are used in a vertical maxillary axis because you have to improve the maxilla so occipital headgear are used this is known as an occipital or a combination headgear this is cervical headgear or a combination of both these combi two this is known as a combi two so these are the head gears the support is taken from the head so it is known as a head gear it has got a inner bow which goes inside the oral cavity and an outer bow which comes out so with this head gear a head strap there is an elastic which is attached here on this side so that is used to apply the force this is a figure which is showing a coil spring a spring this is called a spring most of the people you people are using a ball pin that has got a spring inside the ball pin that is nothing but a coil spring the moment you want to displace this tool or you want to maintain the space or you want to open the space you will use a coil spring now how you're going to use this coil spring you cannot use same size if you take the same size it will not deliver a force it will not open up this space then what you're supposed to do is measure the last bracket to the front bracket is distance and another you have to add 10 or 5 to 10 millimeters in that okay so consider this is 30 millimeter size okay the size is 30 millimeter now you have to dislike this to here so what you will do you will add more of 5 or a 10 millimeter here so that it will deliver a force which will move your center here on this direction and it will move on this direction so you can enter this way that is something called as open coil springs or closed coil springs. Now, springs uh, are of two types open and closed. Open means you have to open the space, closed means you have to retract. When you are retracting the extraction space, you are retracting the anteriors. That time you have to use a closed coil spring. They are closed. If you see the distance between two coils is open, then it is open. If it is very close, thick, then it is closed. Now, what is this pre adjusted device applies is due? See, this was introduced by Larry Andrews. First, it was introduced by Angle, then it is modified by Larry Andrews. The appliance which is 
we use nowadays is a free adjusted tissue supply which was introduced by Larry and Gilles. And then again, this uh, pre adjusted device appliance is still getting modified and modified day by day. So, first of all, this is the pre adjusted device appliance. This is known as a pre adjusted device appliance. He has done, he done a study on the normal occlusion. He took a normal cast of 100, 200, 300 patients and he found out the proper angulation of each and every tooth. And then he came with the conclusion that this is the ideal requirement for this appliance. It's like every tooth has a different only angulation. So he uh, developed his own prescription, something called as a prescription. Prescription means what? He developed a particular angle for central, lateral, canine. First premolar, second premolar, and molar. So, depending upon that, we develop an ideal occlusion, ideal appliance that is known as a pre adjusted visualized appliance by Andrews. Okay. Mainly, the thing is that he used this appliance, he developed this appliance so that it uh, reduces your working time. This is more hassle free because everything is added in the appliance to get a proper result or a stable result or what we call it as an ideal result. Now this pre-adjusted age-wise appliance has got same thing wires, brackets, bracket has got particular slot size, the bracket has got a particular tip, it has got a tip and torque, everything inbuilt in the bracket. But now something, sometimes what happens, patient didn't turn up to you. Or a, a, a tooth which is like uh, debonded moves outside or moves inside, then that becomes a problem because already you have shifted to the higher wire. Then what you are supposed to do is something called as a first order, second order, or third order bends. Here are the bends in the wire. The wire is bended. First order is nothing but horizontal blend. Second order is measures distal angulation. Third order is a torque. Now let's talk about first order. What is the first order bend? Now see here the tooth, this tooth has moved probably outside. So what they have done is here have given a bend here in a horizontal direction, one bend here. If you see the wire, the wire must pass from this way. The U should be like this. This is the way it should be. So they have given a bend so that you have to push that tooth inside because it has moved out of the arch. So they have given a bend that is known as a first order bend. This is the horizontal bend. Second is the second order bend. What exactly is second order bend? Angulation. This is a mesio distal angulation. Now you have placed a bracket, but you are not able to place it on the long axis exactly of the tooth. And you have started the treatment. Now you can't debond the bracket because once you debond, it will not get rebound because you are losing the mesh. So what you have to do it in the second stage, you have to give a second order bend to correct the mesiodistal angulation. Angulation. If your tooth is tilted distally, then you have to add an angulation, second order bend, so that it will correct your mesiodistal angulation. What is third order bend? Third order bend is nothing but a root movement. See, in the second order bend, what you are correcting is your crown angulation with a bend. Second order is used to correct the crown angulation. The same thing, third order bend, they are, or they are called as torque, they are used to correct the root. The central incisor is like this, but it has to be upright. So you have to add more angulation in the arch wire so that your root moves in the buccal direction or the lingual direction. Same thing in the molar also. See, the torque is the least efficient tooth movement using orthodontic appliances. This is a figure which is showing your molar is initially like this. You have added torque into the molar tube and your root is upright. Same thing in the central incisor. It was like this. This is not a recommended. You have to place the incisor exactly upright in the basal bone. So you have to add more of torque. What is the significance of accurate bracket positioning or banding? Now, as I told you before, in the state wire of lines, you have to place the bracket exactly on the facial axis or what is the facial axis or a long axis of the tooth. Long axis means nothing but which is the line which is passing from central to the crown to the root. Straight line which is passing from crown and the root. 
that is known as the facial axis. So you have to place the bracket exactly on the facial axis or along the axis of the tool so that you get a perfect good movement. Okay. Then you have to maintain something called an optimal effect of pre adjustments. Means what? Optimal effect. With the, if you place the bracket properly, then everything is get settled here. You don't have to do any adjustment here. Okay, that is the thing. If the brackets are placed perfectly, then you can maintain proper occlusion. If your brackets are wrong, then you're you're going to get a wrong tooth movement. If the wrong tooth movements are there, either exclusion, intrusion, nasal dipping, distal dipping, then you don't get occlusion. So the basic key is to place the bracket properly onto the tooth surface, on the tooth surface. So what happens if you get a proper occlusion? What ultimately you are going to achieve is your aesthetics. If your smile line is perfect, your all central lateral canine, premolars, and molars they are in a perfect position on a perfect uh, chart as suggested by the Andrews or nowadays we are using MBD appliance. They have their own tip and turn. So depending upon the tip and turn and the bracket uh, position, you can get a proper aesthetics. And the moment you get a proper aesthetics that gives you a perfect stability. See, if your occlusion is stable, then you get proper aesthetics. It is, these are the interconnected things. If your occlusion is perfect, you get more aesthetics, you see a beautiful smile, and it gives more stability. Is it fine for you? Should I stop here?